We're starting to get to that time of year when extra layers get put on, greens start to behave differently, they're, they're holding a lot more water than they were before, rough can play very wet, very thick, and we start to see much more sparse conditions around the green. Winter's approaching. The question is, does your approach to your short game need to be different during the winter than during the summer? Because the challenges you face are bound to be different. The goal today is to go through a few fairly common situations that you might find yourself in the Northern Hemisphere at least, in some of the colder climates. Let's take a look. So in the UK, this is fairly typical. Uh, once it gets into November, December time, a lot of water being held in the ground. Growth is poor uh, and you start to get very bare patches like this. And the problem is they don't play very firm. They actually play quite soft. So I can squish away at this. It's almost like, like a plasticine, uh, like a clay that you can mold around. And it becomes quite intimidating to play. And the, the, the key thing here really is that you can't afford to get stuck in a middle shot. And what I mean by that is you either need to be playing something with loft and trying to really get the club to skiddle on the ground, exposing the sole, not much leading edge, or you play a much lower shot to try and take the ball first and drive it. So we'll give both of those a go, show you my thoughts and intentions when I'm over the ball and see if we can execute a couple. So let's have a quick go at this. Um, my intention with the first one is going to be to land the club on the ground before the ball. Specifically, you can get the trailing edge to bottom out, but then also to skid and skip away from the ground quickly. It's important not to drive that part of the club down into the ground because it's, it's going to stick in it too much. It's going to slow down way too much. The ball speed's already going to be slow, so it's quite a big swing. It's a semi-bunker shot. Uh, one thing I'd do personally is weaken off my left-hand grip. just allows me to throw it a little bit more. Uh, a little bit less leading edge likely, club gets away from the ground, very, very useful. So my intent is on the ground before the golf ball, weaker grip, kind of a big semi-bunker shot type swing. And try not to take too much dirt underneath. Now that turned out pretty good, but it's not going to be for everyone to take such a big swing at what's a 15, 20 yard shot. So we can go to the other end, and this is what I meant by not getting stuck in the middle, the other end of flight. So we're going to go low and more driven. We're going to play a pretty typical low shot, you know, ball back, going to get the shaft up a little bit taller, try and make sure that my wrist is flexed, if anything, and make sure I've got an intent to play a driven, rolling and releasing shot towards the hole. Uh, the one thing we can't do now is make the error of driving the club into the ground behind the golf ball at all, because it's so heavy and wet, that leading edge is going to grab, it's going to go nowhere. You know, each shot has its inherent risk. This one is digging. Uh, the other one would be kind of skipping into the ball maybe a little bit too early and blading it. You know, nothing is foolproof or easy. But both of these options are easy in getting stuck in that middle ground and not really knowing what you're trying to do. So low driven, ball back shaft up, a little bit of a push towards target. Okay, just pulled it a little bit and it actually dug in, and that's another issue we have with winter greens. So we've got what I describe as more of an indifferent lie in that it's not a big patch of mud, but there's definitely mud there, but it's surrounded by tufts of grass. Now this makes it very, very difficult to get the club to skid into it, first of all, like I did on the previous shot, uh, because it can catch the grass behind, it slows it down more, so it starts to explode, um, and it becomes very uncontrollable. Now I could go in steeper for sure, at the risk again that I'm going to dig leading edge in. Now an alternative to that would be to use something like a hybrid. So this is a two hybrid and I can play it like a putt and because it's going to come off with a little bit of launch angle, very little spin, it should skip through all this stuff in front, make it onto the green and start to behave like a putt. So hybrid grip down, play it like a putter. You don't need to worry about getting to the bottom of the golf ball, anywhere below the equator and it's going to come off with adequate launch to get it over whatever's in front. Something like this. Little putting stroke rehearsal, very narrow stance. I know it's going to launch. Just got to get my touch. Now, considering I don't really practice that shot at all, that was pretty good, but you can see it came off at a lot of speed. Winter green, it's slow enough that it took the speed out of the golf ball. It's finished up with a tap in. Now what you'll find with a lot of courses is there's been some growth through the summer and as we go into the autumn and winter months the grass will be left long uh, not really mown down particularly short it's not going to grow much more but that does provide some 
density and juiciness to the rife in the winter. Now, the thing to remember here is it's probably going to be damp majority of the time you play it. It's never going to dry out quite enough, so it's always going to slip up the club face. When the ball slips up, it launches higher. Because it launches higher, you can play it with a little bit less loft, which would be my advice. I've dropped down to a sandwich or a 56 from a 60. I'm going to play it a little bit open. It requires a little bit less speed, shouldn't slide up the face too much, and play it almost like I was playing it with a 60 in the summer months. So, big swing going to go through the rough, a little bit less loft, face twisted open, touch of left aim, Let's see what we can do. Get a feel, feel for the grass on the rehearsal, see how much resistance I'm getting. Okay, a little bit short, but not bad. Um, key here for me is not to have to take too big a swing and it plays right into your court really in that instance is that it will come out higher and softer than normal because of the moisture that's retained within the grass through the winter. Now hopefully it's not too thick and you have to use too high a speed and the club gets through without too much trouble. Now the greens are typically going to play much much softer at this time of year so a fair question would be do I fly it further knowing it's going to stop more often than not or do I land it on the ground and deal with a winter green, which we all know is harder to putt on. So it's gonna be equally harder to make a ball chip and roll out on. A little bit less predictable for me. Let's, let's take a quick look and see what happens. We're gonna go low route first. So I think I've got a nine iron. Just gonna try and roll this most of the way, land it maybe 30, 40% of the total distance of me to the hole, knowing it's soft. Now maybe worthwhile you're actually going out and practicing and figuring out what are my flight to roll ratios on a, on a flat area on my winter greens. I'm gonna hazard a guess at maybe 40% flight with the nine iron, see if we can get a 60 roll out. Doing go okay. I don't think I quite got my 40%. It just hurt, maybe even hurt it on the first bounce. Just dig its heels in a little bit, which you know with a nine iron shouldn't really do, but hey, it's winter, soft greens. So let's fly it up a little bit further. So I've got my 60. And I'm going to try and fly it most of the way to the hole, knowing that this thing's going to hit the ground and stop. Um, I don't need to add loft to it. It's just going to be a pretty stock shot. Shouldn't need to do anything particularly special. This really comes down to me controlling flight and touch. Okay, a little bit under hit. Grab a little bit of soft ground, which is always going to be the risk. It's not going to skid and bounce off the turf in the same way. A little bit under hit, slightly better than a chip and run, but that's more because that's how I see most of these shots anyway. Uh, playing a runner is a little bit out of my normal scope. Now, I think they both have their value. One is a little bit easier to execute, maybe strike wise, but on winter greens, you're going to struggle to get the touch and get the read and get the roll quality, more importantly than anything else. The other one takes out all those variables that it relies on you and your ability to hit your number. Finally brings us into winter sand. Um, typically just plays a little bit more wet. You know, there are so many different sand types are out there. They all behave and play slightly differently. And they all really react differently to when they have damp and moisture in them. Um, these are kind of a little bit gritty and will play slower, heavier than summer sand. Or well, summer version of the same sand, I should say. It's not like it changes in the winter. Um, so I'm just going to go down a wedge. Uh, the easiest thing I'd, I'd say is you play with a 56, drop to 52. You play with a 52, drop to a pitching wedge, 60, 56, so on and so on. Um, just go down a wedge to make sure that the, the speed you lose as the club goes into the sand because it's playing slower, heavier, doesn't have a negative effect on your normal swing length for a specific length of a shot. So let's give it a whirl. I've hit it far enough, but you can see there wasn't a hell of a lot of sand taken, but it did slow the club down an awful lot. I mean, it's a fairly high paced swing, drier sand, playing a little bit lighter, it would come out with much more speed on it. Let's have one more go at it. Better, better, getting there, but you see these just small, subtle changes, good choices in the winter to make your short game more reliable in these autumn and winter months.